Well, good morning, drivers. It is Sunday morning. It is the day the Lord hath made, and the day we get to go and celebrate the resurrection every Sunday, not just Easter Sunday, every Sunday. We get to celebrate Jesus Christ has conquered death, hell, and the grave. Amen. Amen. And uh, we get to be a part of it. Uh, I want to say, just for those of you, I know I had a lot of people told me that they had a hard time hearing me Friday. I, I just kind of, on the spur of the moment, was thinking about some things with the veterans and whatnot. It was Veterans Day. And as I had mentioned in that, um, I had watched a movie about some, uh, a war movie that was based on a true story and heard an interview about another movie that's coming out. So uh, anyway, I was just, uh, had that on my mind. We're soldiers in the army of the Lord. And I got on there and I know my sound was bad. I was, uh, you could hear my truck running in the background and whatnot. But uh, anyway, I want to say uh, thank you again to the veterans and uh, appreciate all that y'all have done for us, your service. And uh, I know there's many veterans who are still serving. I was thinking the other day about how our World War II veterans, uh, all that they went through in war, and I can't imagine uh, the things that people have been through during war times and, and the, the horrificness of it. But uh, they came home and they served our country. Many of them became politicians and leaders, business leaders and whatnot in our country. And I thank God for them. And we've got a few uh, new veterans that's been uh, elected into office and Congress, and uh, so I'm excited about that. Uh, veterans have a different perspective because they know what it's like to really, truly fight for those freedoms, and we thank you for your service. Again, I would like to ask you, if you would, to just mention uh, where you served, what branch of the military, maybe how long, rank, if you don't mind, and uh, if you served in wartime, war at. <clears throat> and uh, with that in mind, I want to read you a scripture over in Mark <clears throat> chapter 5, <clears throat> because as I was thinking about that, uh, veterans and, and being a, a soldiers in the army, and we are, as Paul told Timothy, we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. Amen. And so I've, I've, I've been meditating on that and thinking about it and reading some different scriptures. Uh, Chaplain Billy Green from up in Kentucky uh, wrote a piece in, the, in our newsletter. Matter of fact, if you've not read that, you should go to uh, our website at truckstopministries.org and uh, just look at our newsletter and you'll see Chaplain David and uh, and Chaplain Billy Green had, had uh, have a write-up in there. Anyway, Chaplain Billy Green, uh, he, he talked about the slippery road home and a vision, a dream, if you would. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's just no place like home. Amen. And uh, so I, I've been thinking about how we're soldiers in the army of the Lord and how we should be uh, not entangled with this place, not entangled with this place. If you talk to any uh, of our military men and women when, uh, when, when they're at war or they're in another country, they think often about home. They think about coming home, the people at home, what's it like at home, what's going on at home. Uh, you know, back in the old days, you used to write a lot of letters home. Now we have technology and are able to do different things and FaceTime, text messages and whatnot. But there's just no place like home. Uh, and as truck drivers, over the road truck drivers, we, we know there is no place like home. Well, I've met drivers from literally all over the country, uh, all over the, the lower 48, I've met drivers from other countries, literally from Australia and, and uh, they're working here. I've met some from Mexico, Canada. And even though they might be working in the States, there's no place like home. I have an uncle who uh, uh, was in the military. He married, uh, actually married my, my mom's sister. He was from Vermont. <clears throat> now for us people in the South, you know, Vermont's way up there in the cold and it's way, way different than uh, Louisiana but he's lived in Louisiana now most of his life. But, uh, but he even talks about it. Uh, he's getting nearly 90 now and he still talks about Vermont and home and things that he, he done when he was a, a, a young man and a child growing up in Vermont. So there's just no place like home. Amen. Can I get amen on that? There's no place like home. So if there's no place like home, uh, as Christians, as believers, then we should be thinking about home. And uh, 
and thinking about those people. And I want to read this scripture to you. Uh, it says in Mark chapter 5, <laughs> excuse me, verse 19, it says, uh, this is talking about where Jesus uh, went across and, uh, man, I don't know what's happened. My computer just did something. I don't know if y'all are hearing me, seeing me or not, but it blanked out my screen. <laughs> uh, but this is where Jesus goes over to the other side and, 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 and uh, uh, Mark chapter four, I love this passage of scripture where the storm came up, you know, and everybody got all shook up and then Jesus comes on the scene and, and wakes up and says, hey, peace be still. They go over to the other side, just as Jesus told them they was going to the other side. It was a promise from God. Hey, we're going to the other side. They went to the other side because Jesus has a purpose on going to the other side because this is where the maniac with Gadara is at. And so y'all know the story. If you don't, he he uh, he delivers this man from demonic uh, holes in his life, strongholds in his life. This is where the uh, uh, all of the demons went into the pigs and they ran off into the dungeon cliff towards the Sea of Galilee. Uh, I went to that place where they say this happened. It's pretty neat uh, to get to go there and, and just see the way it way it was, the way the terrain is and whatnot. To think about, you know, I'm here and, and something so dramatic happened 2000 years ago and uh so this man in chapter five now this man it says that he was possessed with the devil he was living in the graveyard and then he meets jesus and jesus delivers him and it says in verse 15 that he was sitting and clothed and in his right mind now, i just wanted this ain't really what i want to talk about i don't want y'all to think about this when you meet jesus it changes things that's why we don't have a spirit of fear but we have love power and, and, and a sound mind because Jesus Christ changes us on the inside. And so he's he's in his right mind. He's clothed. He got his clothes on, by the way. Amen. He's not running around naked like most people run around today in America. He wasn't running around naked. He had his clothes on. And and so this is one all the swine that came out of him, went into the swine. He was just filled with demons, filled with demons. And then verse 19 is what I want to read to you. This man wants to go with Jesus. I mean, who wouldn't want to be with Jesus? He delivered you from all that. He changed your life. Why wouldn't you want to be in relationship with Jesus Christ? Why wouldn't you want to follow him and, and just honor him with your life? Uh, I don't know how many times I've heard people say, I owe, owe him my life uh, in wartime because somebody did something spectacular for him, gave their life maybe. Uh, this, this interview I heard about last week or two weeks ago, uh, they were talking about this movie called The Gift, where a soldier gave his life for his his uh, fellow soldiers, his brothers in arms, because uh, he grabbed the hand grenade and just brought it up to his uh, Kevlar. And, 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 of course, it, it killed him, but he saved others because of it. Uh, when that's happened to you, why wouldn't you want to honor that person? And, and really, I mean, how could you forget somebody giving their life? For you so this is what jesus has done for this man he, he's he's changed his life so radically and he wants to be with jesus but in verse 19 of chapter 5 of mark it says how be it jesus suffered him not but saith unto him go home go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the lord hath done for thee and hath uh, had compassion on thee now this was a man running around naked in the tomb screaming and hollering and uh, just a maniac. Nobody wanted nothing to do with him. And this man has done, uh, met Jesus, and this radically changed his life. Amen? And so Jesus tells him to go home and tell everybody what I've done for you. Amen? So uh, it's, it's I was thinking about Brother Chaplain Billy Green. He, he wrote, uh, used a scripture in his, in, his, uh, in his message that he put in the uh, uh, newsletter. And he used Luke 12, uh, 34, I believe it was. Let me see. Yeah. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And he he relates that to uh, his whole story was about he lost his wallet, had to go back home and get his wallet. And he said, home is where your wallet is. In other words, where your treasure is, that's 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 where that's home to you. That's what is important to you. And uh, where your heart is, that's where your pocketbook is. Amen. And uh, so... What what Jesus is saying here to this man is to go back to those people at home, those people that you love, those people that you care about, and uh, 
and tell them what I've done. Now, I hope and pray you know Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that he has changed your life radically because I'm telling you what, if he comes into your life, he's going to change your life. Amen. But I want to ask you this question. How many times have you actually went to your home, folks, and told them what Jesus has done for you? Do people in, in your hometown really know what Jesus has done for you? Have you told your family? I mean, we're, we're right here at the holidays. We're all thinking about coming home. I'm going to be home next uh, next Sunday, the way it's worked out. Uh, I've got some things to do with the with the ministry and they're moving some chapels around, different things. And so I'll be home next Sunday and I'm going to get to preach down at uh, uh, Marlowe Baptist Church in Louisiana. I get to go see some old friends. And uh, so I'm excited about being home. Amen. And so when you're at home, do people know that you love Jesus? Do people around the house know how much you love Jesus? Are you are you a, a secret disciple? You just kind of read the Bible a little bit. Maybe you listen to a few people like me on the Internet or something. But do people really know that you are a disciple of Christ? Have you ever told, as some of these young folks will say, your home is your people? Do they know? Have you ever told them? Amen. I mean, yeah, they ought to know because you where you live. Maybe you're not out drinking and partying and doing this, that, and the other. Uh, so they know there's something different about you. But I know a lot of good people that uh, they don't drink, uh, they don't do drugs, but they don't go to church either, and they don't they don't really care about the things of God. Uh, they're hardworking people, and they're not concerned about the things of God. So there should be a difference with people who are truly followers of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, you, you should be not obnoxious, but in such a way that people know that you have the love of God in your heart and you ought to be sharing it with people. I see Brother Brownie Fisher's on here with us, and he's uh, he come to know the Lord on, on up in years, and it radically changed his life. It didn't happen to him when he was 20 years old. And he'll tell you in a heartbeat, Jesus changed, it changed everything. It changed his whole perspective about life in general. And, uh, that's what Jesus does. Whenever you meet the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, I mean, the one that came out of nowhere, stood on nothing and spoke this world into existence. Hallelujah. It can't help but change your life. Amen. It's going to change your life. Now, these folks that say, oh, I got saved when I was 12 and uh, they went to church a few times, you know, between there and there as a teenager. And they've been living like hell the rest of their life, and they're 50 years old now. Folks, i got a problem with that testimony. I'm just going to tell you. I don't believe I'm Baptist. I go to a Baptist church. I'm a member of a Baptist church. But I'm telling you what, I got saved, born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, filled with the Holy Ghost of God, and it changed my life way before I became Baptist, okay? And 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 I'm not preaching Baptist denomination, Methodist, Catholic, anything. I'm not talking about all that. I'm just talking about Jesus Christ changing your life. And that's why sometimes, listen, I've preached at, uh, in our place at a home, uh, United Pentecostal churches are big in our area. And it's a place where you can go and shout hallelujah. I fit right in. I've preached at some Pentecostal churches before. Why? Because Jesus changed my life. Amen. I say never got over it. And folks who just say they got saved and they've lived like hell for 30, 40, 50 years, I have a problem with their testimony. Now, I'm not God. I'm not judging them. But I don't know their heart. But I can tell you what, if what's in your heart is going to come out, folks, I love my wife. I'd do anything in the world for her. Whatever I need to do to keep a smile on her face, that's what I'm going to do. I love my grandkids. And those kids come over, and they do things that I wouldn't let any other kid do. I'm just telling you. Uh, we had a couple around here the other day, and I mean, I'm just they just do things that I'm not gonna let nobody else do, like bring their dog in the house. Amen. I mean, they'll come to the house and they bring their little puppy dog in the house. I don't have any animals in my house, don't want any animals in my house. But do you think I'm gonna tell my granddaughter, hey, get that thing out of here? No, I just ain't gonna do it. Miss Nancy ain't gonna do it either. Amen. Nana don't do that kind of stuff. Why? Because I love them. It's different. They're my grandkids. So it's in my heart. I love them. And I want them to love me. And I want them to be happy. So why wouldn't I, if I met Jesus Christ, and I've asked him, it says over in Romans, believe it in your heart. I've asked him into my heart. I've asked him to save me. i asked him to forgive me. Why wouldn't I want to be pleasing to him? Why wouldn't I want to tell everybody else about him? He's a great great savior 
huh? Why would I want to tell anybody? Listen, I talk about my grandkids and, and we got some that are athletes and they do great. And we got some that run track, play basketball and uh, do different things. And, and they're in the dance, they do, uh, ride horses, roping, all these different things that they do. I'm proud of them. They're my grandkids. So if you know Jesus and Jesus is in your heart and you're filled with the spirit of God, why wouldn't that come out? Why wouldn't people know? Why wouldn't your homies know? Amen. So I want to, I want to ask you to think about this. There's no place like home. And if we're going to share Jesus with other folks and we're going to have that on our heart and our minds, how about thinking about where our eternal home is? And I know some of you live in different places. Uh, my home is in Louisiana. Our office is in Georgia. And there's some wonderful, wonderful places all over America, all over the globe, some beautiful places. But if there's no place like home, and home is where your heart is, amen? Home is where you're, I'm telling you, when I'm gone, listen, I know I go. I, that's what I got to do. I go make a few bucks. I go somewhere else and preach. I go to another state. I do whatever. But I always want to come back home. There's no place like home. I just, there's no place like home. So I always want to come back home. And, and I want you to think about this. And I won't go into a lot of different scriptures about heaven and things. But if there's no place like home, uh, over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6, <clears throat> it's talking about, uh, well, let me just read you this verse. It says, therefore, we are always confident when you're confident and you know you this is this is the way it's going to be. I'm confident. We are confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Okay. So we're not physically with the Lord. We're at home in this body. But it, next verse, verse seven says, we walk by faith, not by sight, because we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. In other words, we want to be present with the Lord and be absent from the body, be present with the Lord. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm living to die. I'm living to go to heaven. And I mean, I just can't, I, I really, I can't wait to get there. There's so many people I want to see on the other side. Number one, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Home, home, folks. For me, home is really being with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not just my address at Florine, Louisiana. Home is where your heart is. How much do you think about home? I'm talking about your heavenly home. How much do you really think about that? How much do you think about being with Jesus, being with people that's going on to be with the Lord? How much do you really think about that? It goes on to say that that we're, as we're walking by faith, it says, but verse 9, wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted, which means to be pleasing of him pleasing to Jesus. And uh, then he talks about how we're all going to fear before, appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And it's and it says here in this verse 10 that the things that we do in our body, that's what we're going to be judged on, whether it be good or bad. What our motives was is what it means. So are we here on this earth looking forward to going home and bringing as many people as we can with us, most especially our our family members, our home folks, people that we went to school with, people that we graduated with, are we interested in seeing them with us for all eternity? If we are, why not tell them what Jesus has done for you? Amen. Why not be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ? Why not witness to them about what God has done for you? Because I'm telling you, there's no place like home. There's no place like my heavenly home. Nothing is going to compare to it ever so let's share that. Listen, we got we got the holidays on our mind. We're thinking about going home. We're thinking about being home with our family. While you're home with your family, how about let's talk a little bit less about football, a little bit less about politics, and a whole lot more about Jesus. That's what it's all about. That's what we got to be thankful for because we have family to go home to. And and when we go and have Christmas celebration and we get together, listen, there's a lot of things I could say about Christmas and all, and I most People that know me know I don't think Christmas, December 25th is, is correct at all. There's a lot of different things. But we're going to get together and we're going to celebrate the birth of Christ. Even though it may not be actually his birth date, 
we're going to celebrate the birth of Christ and be sure that your family, your friends, your, your grandkids know why you're celebrating. It's not just to get gifts. Yeah, I like to give my kids stuff. I don't even like it when my kids buy me stuff, amen? But it's not about those gifts. If you don't connect the gift, the, the gift that Jesus Christ gave us for the wages of sin is death, but hallelujah, the gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, the greatest gift you could ever receive. And he, and he gives it to you. A gift is free. If somebody gives you something because they want to, not because, oh, I got to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak, or uh, they're going to give me a gift. I got to give them a gift. No, Jesus Christ gave you the ultimate gift. He gave you his life. He paid your sin debt. And he did that because he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And I can say the world needs a little more love. Amen. We need a little more love in the world today. And I'm not talking about this, this, worldly love i'm not talking about all the sexual immoralities that go on that's not love i'm talking about love the love of god and we need to share that now, i just want to encourage you driver when you go home and i hope you get to go home and spend time with your family during the holidays and all that share jesus with your family and listen if you're not i put a little post on facebook uh, about some things that are going on in, in some uh, different locations and uh uh, chapels in uh, Ohio and Tennessee. And if you're out on the road, try to get by one of those places, look it up on Facebook, look it up on our website and uh, see what's going on several different weeks, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Uh, we got chaplains out there that want to serve. They're going on Christmas Day because they want to serve drivers. They want to be there for the ones that don't get to go home. And, uh, <clears throat> and I just thank God for our chaplains that got such a big heart and, uh, and want to serve. So, I just want to, I just want y'all to think about that today as we are traveling around getting ready to go home. How about sharing your heavenly home with some of those folks? Amen. Because there's no place like home. And I want to see all my loved ones, all of my relatives, all of my family, friends, forever and ever. It makes a difference, man. When you know this is no place I could go on and on about how there's no place like home. And when you think about going home and going to that place where you're going to be. It's, it's a place of security. It's a place where you you can rest, where you can let your hair down, so to speak. <clears throat> Nothing I like to do more than when I get home, if it's not freezing cold, and uh, just sit on the porch for a minute. Just sit on the porch. Maybe drink a cup of coffee. Just sit on the porch and just look around. And Of course, when I look around, I say, all the stuff I need to be doing. <laughs> i got to cut the grass. i got to do that. And, and uh, Think about all these things. But there's nothing like just getting home, sitting on the porch, and enjoying a moment at home. We're going to get to do that for all eternity in heaven if you know Jesus. So I ask you, driver, do you know Jesus? Do you really know him? Do you have a re relationship with him, a personal relationship? Only one way to have that tells us over in Romans chapter 10, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it says right above that verse 13, it says that if you will, Believe it in your heart. Confess it with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords. And I'm paraphrasing King of Kings that he died for you. <coughs> he rose again on the third day. He is the son of God. You believe that in your heart. Receive what he's done for you. He will change your life. I promise you, there's no doubt in my mind. He radically, radically changed my life. He changes you want to. He changes things you get excited about. And he, and he takes the weight of this world and all the stuff that goes on that we don't understand. What's going on globally? What's going on in our politics? All these things that we could get all been out of shape over. I'm not worried about it. Why? Because Psalm 37 says, fret not thyself of the evildoers. I ain't going to worry about them folks. God knows what's going on. He's got you back. Amen. He's got your future. I hope pray you know him and you trust him. I want to have a word of prayer with you. And if, if you need to talk to somebody, please don't hesitate to call 1-800-248-8662. Uh, we have chaplains who are, who are manning that phone line 24-7. Somebody will answer that phone if you call. And uh, if you need to talk to somebody, do so. Let me also remind you that uh, we uh, I've been on YouTube a lot. And if you have not already, I would encourage you to go and subscribe to that YouTube channel. It's called Truck Driving Preacher. Subscribe to that channel. And when I go live on YouTube, you'll know it. And uh, uh, Facebook's kind of up and down. It's just got a great reach and uh, some good things. But I'm not always able to get on it for some odd reason. So uh, y'all uh, y'all keep us in your prayers. We love you guys. And uh, 
I'm going to have a word of prayer with you, and I'm going to let you go. And I'm fixing to head off to go worship and praise the Lord myself. Amen. Congregate with fellow believers. Amen. Forsaken not the assembling of the believers. I'm going to get together with them and shout the victory. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for loving each and every one of us. While we were yet sinners, Lord, you loved us, you died for us, and you give us eternal life if we'll just receive it. Father, I pray if there's just one person who hears my voice today, they don't know that forgiveness of sin. They don't know what it's like to know without a doubt you're on your way home, that heavenly home, to live there for all eternity, Lord. I pray today, Lord, you reveal yourself to them, draw them to you with your sweet Holy Spirit. And, Father, they would receive what you've already done for them, and they would be born again into the family of God. Strengthen them, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, just be with those drivers out on the road. Keep them safe. we got different places where the weather's not so great. I just ask you to watch over them, keep them safe from the highway. And, Lord, I pray you see them safely home for the holidays. Let us have a great time at home with our friends and family, Father. I just thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us, all that you've done for us, and all that you continue to do for us. Lord, I thank you. I love you. <clears throat> we praise you and adore you, Lord. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And listen, you talk to somebody, you need to talk to somebody, please call the prayer line 1-800-248-8662. If you made a profession of faith and you want to follow Jesus, let us know. We've got some materials we'd send you, love to send you, and uh, no charge or anything just to help you get kind of get going. And uh, if nothing else, if you just receive Christ and you don't know really where, where you're at, I know I swear I was when I got saved. I was only 27 years old and I didn't know anything about the Bible. And somebody told me to start reading the book of John, the Gospel of John, and I did. And it's a great love chapter. It just talks about how much God loves us. I gave his only begotten son because he loves us. Amen. So I'd encourage you to start reading right there. And uh, hope you all have a blessed day. Love you guys. Y'all be safe out there. Keep us in your prayers. And uh, keep our, our staff in your prayers, uh, those folks at home office that keep us going, and then all those chaplains out there volunteering. I thank God for them, and some of them are on here, and I just want y'all to know I appreciate y'all so much. Keep on keeping on. Amen. And y'all be safe out there. Remember, drivers, we are the greatest North American missionaries there is. We're all over the place. Tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. Keep that shiny side up, that rubber side down. We are trucking for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a blessed day. Be safe. Love y'all.